Welcome to the Faster, Easier, Better show. This podcast is short, fun, and jam-packed with good ideas that you can start using right away. Welcome to another episode. I'm your co-host, Ellen, along with my co-host... Lee Silver reporting for duty, sir. Man. Oh, <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, that, that seems very formal. What's going on? Well, I... Uh, in writing a new book and in some of my speaking engagements, I took a job, like a job job, oh, a, like job, a job, job, a manual Whoa. labor job early like, in the morning. So, okay. That was like going to be my question. You had to be there like every day and, and well, ready to roll? Every day. <laughs> every, almost every day. Yada, okay. yada, yada. I'm not there anymore, but <laughs> I, I lasted for six months. I wanted to see what it was like. Um, as we talk to people who work day jobs, regular jobs, full-time jobs, jobs in offices, and in this case, it was a mail sorting thing, um, uh-huh. what it's like. And to and to try and take some of my ideas about efficiency and try and help them, the irony was they weren't interested. <laughs> they, they, <laughs> they, they are losing so much money due to inefficiency. You know, I mean, I was thinking, boy, if we could, you could pay us all more. If you just would do these simple things that I'm telling you, but I was a nothing, a minion, a, a schmeckle, a nothing. <laughs> they could care less for you to tell even us when, what to do. Even when you left, did you offer some? No, beer? no. Here's my 58 page report on what y'all are doing wrong. I still could actually, but <laughs> um, but you know some of the things that I noticed that I think would apply to everybody. They had this. Big, so it, these big bags of packages would come in, in like a just a giant, looked like a clear trash bag. And then they you'd have to get them on a conveyor belt, and then the, then people at the end of the conveyor belt would put them in, in the zip codes that they go to. Simple, right? Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> they had this massive guy, this Samoan guy, and he'd come in and he'd just throw them all over the place. And everyone's like, oh, look at him. Look at how great he is. Look at how fast he is. But – when I would do it, I would take the bag out, look at it, and some of them went like two feet from where I was standing. So I would put those aside. And then I would turn them the right way so that the person at the end would be able to see the label and just take it, and it would slide better. So in the end, we probably were equal, but I was like slow. Oh. But in the end, I wasn't, but they didn't see that. They're like, why can't you be more like Samoan guy? I'm like, well, A, he's huge, <laughs> B... It's actually not the best way to do it, you know. And you know, I would I would think sometimes when we we hear about technology, and maybe not even this is this is the like the least AI job ever. Although it could be <laughs> automated, right? A lot of things like this should well, yeah, this could be easily could automated. But every package um, has to be scanned now all of a sudden. And so someone would stand there with a scanning thing and just hold it over each. I'm like, why don't we just mount those up here on uh, this? bar right and then pass the bag under it so that's one less person we need to be standing there they could be at the other end sorting oh no no we no 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 we used to do this we've always done it this way and this is the way we do it but but there's a better way a faster way a more efficient way please let me help you let me help you help me well you know job security but I, I mean, could care just, less. I wanted them to fire not me. Not you. Not you. But, <laughs> like, please, but the other <laughs> but this, end, this experiment, this undercover boss thing, it's killing me. My back. Um, okay. So. That was one of the things. Yeah. So what were some other things you discovered about inefficiencies on the line, so to speak? Well, I'm sure you've seen this uh, out there, listeners, in your workplace. It seemed like there was a few of us that were doing most of the work. <laughs> Yeah. Literally the heavy lifting and these other people that would go on these long breaks or they they would pretend like they were working, but they really weren't. And then this one guy that got paid more than everyone that just sat in his desk and I'd sometimes like creep in there and just see what he's looking at the Internet. Not we're working of sweating, which is kind of why I liked it. You know, I got my exercise in, but right. Th- dead weight. And so, I mean, again, not my place, but if I was running right. that place, see ya, see ya. We'll keep a smaller crew that works hard and get rid of these people that were entitled or I don't even know why they were so lazy, but it, it bothered me no end. So how do we apply this to our, our daily life? Well, I think, you know, we, we really should be looking at not hours worked, but productivity within those hours. And if somebody gets done earlier, right, 
that's it, but you know, but gets the job done. And then the flip side of what I was saying about the big Samoan guy, yeah, he was faster, but it wasn't better. Sometimes to slow down, as I think you are going to talk about in a future We're episode. We're going to talk about that, yeah. But to slow down a little bit, to actually speed up is one of the things I noticed. This guy going so fast ended up costing us time down the line. His sloppiness, uh-huh. um, his inefficiency. And so I just think when I went in there, I looked around and I saw all kinds of things that could be done more efficiently. If we did that at our home, in our garage, in, in our workplace, just look around and say, is there a faster and better way to do this? And then apply that on one small thing a day. Because I would try it every day. Like, today's the day I'm going to... And I did. I tried all kinds of things. I brought in music one time. It worked great. And they're like, no, we can't have music here. But the workers were like, we were moving and dancing and it was fun. Samoan guy was throwing even faster. (laughs) (laughs) But here's the thing. I I think to make this whole idea even better, think about what you did. You came in as an outsider with outside eyes Mm. and you could see stuff. So at your home... You got to get somebody coming in with outside eyes. And I, I would say, you know, whether it's come in and look at your office or look at how you're doing things. I don't know. Get a trusted friend. Yeah. Get your spouse. Like They've that probably commercial. just been waiting to tell you what you're doing wrong. See the progressive or Geico? Oh, we have ants. And it's, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Aunt Ginny. You're going to have to dust all that stuff? Oh, exactly. good luck with that. Yeah. But like have get an, an outside pair of eyes. Good call. That's what I would suggest. I agree. But anyway, <laughs> I have since been let go of my position. Gladly. <laughs> <laughs> Happily. Well, welcome back to uh, our world here. And uh, thanks for sharing what you found out in the world out there. And I'm sure it's going to be a great book and speech. And uh, the listeners, have somebody check out your stuff. How in- inefficient you might be, even though we don't want to say that. But, you know, find out where things can change. And I know we're going over time, but I must say it. One more thing, and that is if you are in charge of a department, a staff, or even just in charge of your own workspace and your own work product, it sometimes does help to, like you said, an outside person, but to welcome new ideas. When when a company like the one I worked for was closed off to any new idea, any good idea, they're just shooting themselves in the foot. The workers that are doing the work sometimes have the best ideas because they're doing the work. And the people overseeing them either haven't done it in a long time or never did it. Just saying. I got nothing more to add to that. That is word. Be with us again next week for another episode. 